Golden Glue with a Syndra Pantheon combo. They should try and rule the uh, mid lane for the team. We're definitely seeing a lot of that Pantheon, as, you're, as you are saying. Cloud9's uh, contract playing that a little bit over in the Academy League. And we're now we're going to see it locked in here for Golden Guardians with that set support from Huhi as he locks himself onto the LCS stage with the Bruiser on the bot side looking to get thrown in as that Oath Sworn from Callista on her Fate's Call. And we'll see how that plays out against the Thresh and the Misfortune of bot side. I'm liking this matchup. Yeah. Pretty spicy for Golden Guardians as well. I always love, uh, you know, the melee supports with Callista because you get to throw in with the closer range with the ultimate um, and use it super offensively mm -hmm. rather than only using it defensively. Um, Set is already annoying to try and kill. If Set is also bound to Callista, then <laughs> even if you do get past the shields, then the ultimate comes out, gets the big save there. So you can definitely see a lot of potential in uh, this champion for Huhi and this combination for Huhi and FBI. So Golden Guardians making a big bet, subbing out Keith, subbing in Huhi here, who made the role swap over to support a lot earlier. And they've got a very interesting combo down here and an interesting matchup for his first LCS stage game this year. Yeah, it's not a Tom Kench going in that. And also with the Pantheon, sometimes you see the Braum, you get the double shield, things get safe. You don't really need to stop too much poke coming in other than Zoe's on the side of Dignitas. This one on this game. We are going to be getting into game number three here. There's Golden Glue and Froggen on your screen as they are ready and poised to get to the mid lane and battle each other. We're on to the Rift. Let's see what these teams have for each other. Really important one here. So close in the standings. Dignitas losing their previous game means that they are half a one down here from the Golden Guardians, but definitely some time to make up ground. Everybody trying to get their wins in as quickly as possible to have a good shot at that playoff spot. And we have a quick sideline with a narrow to see what's going on with Golden Guardians. Well, obviously, we had to get your thoughts on the swap coming in. Very rare to see an ADC to support swap in for an ADC to support. So what do you feel that who he's going to bring here to the table today? Uh, definitely expect who he to be bringing a lot of uh, stuff in the way of communication. This is probably one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make as a coach, Keith really did so well as a player to improve on this. And like, I'm kind of the person that pushed him towards taking this risk. So even making this swap, like, it really hurt me, honestly. But uh, Jay's good. Jay's a good player. Jay was always a good player. We just expected we wouldn't need this level of communication he brings. But as the split went on, we realized, yeah, we think we need this. And practice has been great with Jay. So I expect it to be uh, really good. Well, you're commending both of the players in this case, and we saw Keith really prioritizing a lot of the engage potential, which also seems to be heavy in the meta. Do you think that coming from the ADC aggressive background helps with both of these players in that aspect? Um, yeah, I think with Keith, probably the biggest thing was just laning. He understood a whole lot better than Jay did initially since he played in the lane. So it was really easy for him to play engage supports like Thresh, like Nautilus. He felt a lot more comfortable on those. Um, as for Jay playing for mid lane, he definitely understands the map a lot better too and what he can do. So playing stuff more like uh, like these flex picks like Seth, playing like Tom Pinch, he's, he's always been better at. Um, so it's like a different level of strength that they both bring from being from different roles. All right, bringing those roles into the rift here today. Let's head back to it. Yeah, I realize a lot of people have not watched uh, LCS as long as us, Riv, and oh. don't know the history of who he how so many people were really excited, actually, when they first heard that he was going to swap to support. Um, and he's been doing it a while now, but it's because he made a name for himself with the Aurelian Soul roaming style mid lane champions playing a lot for the team. And I like how Aneros is highlighting his communication with the team. Yeah. Uh, he's always had very good relationships with uh, the rest of the players, and he's able to coordinate you know, things like level two roams on Aurelian Soul with your bottom lane. Uh, now he's doing it from the support position where you have a lot of setup and a lot of control, and even more so in this particular game, because as we mentioned, combining it with a champion like Kalista gives you so many playmaking options. Um, Kalista notoriously, of course, um, does not scale as well as a lot of other uh, marksman because you're not going to go for crit multipliers later on, but she has such good early spikes and really puts an emphasis on dragon control. Not only because of the long, uh, strong lane phase, but also because of the wrens that help out your jungler with extra damage for those neutral objectives. Talk about who he and those communications. I'm excited to see how the fights are organized with Closer's Pantheon all coming in, Haunts are possibly teleporting. There's so much that they can do to create fights here.
We'll see how those get organized as the time comes. Still just at level three and four in lanes. Hoonie, Hoonie rather, and Hans are going back and forth. That'll be a fun one. As Johnson takes quite a bit of damage on the bot side of the map. They get pushed into their turret pretty hard and right quick as they cannot fight Hoonie and FBI. Hunter, good sidestep there, doesn't get pulled in. Possibility of a little bit of extra damage since Acadian was hovering on the top side. I like this as well, and it's something to point out with a lot of jungler movement. If you don't have to spend much time to get your recall off over by your top laner, especially as Rek'Sai, that provides that passive where you get um, sonar basically to alert you if the enemy jungler is around, you can basically just buffer uh, who he's play style. Um, you give him an extra little alert system and Ooh. allow who he or Hooney to push up. That's going to be really annoying having both I, of them I, in the I, same I, game now. <laughs> I just went through it. I'm trying to train my brain already. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Acadian almost getting found out there. 100% kill participation for him in first blood. I should say just in first blood, not kill participation, but 100% first blood. But it's only one game, so the stats are a bit buffed there. We'll see if he can keep up on that raid as he already tried top side. Yeah, buffed much like Acadian himself. He comes in. <laughs> I, I'd say that most people consensus on yesterday. Yeah. Probably the best player on the team yesterday in his you know, debut substitution this year. Really well done on the Lee Sin. A lot of it was. He was cruising. Yeah, hovering around uh, top side, protecting Hooney's aggressive play style, um, you know, really playing to the team, fitting in with a team that quickly. Um, really does say a lot. I wanted to point out a lot of the extra wards that they had done too. A lot of vision here that is now disappearing um, for Dignitas, but he did a very good job moving in, also using the extra information to go for the invade, and he's pulled slightly ahead of Closer on the extra camps. Full clearing back to his top side now. Being a nuisance. Just a hook into the dark for... Aphromoon, who he so the disjointed backs now kind of work out as Johnson can come back with FBI also doing the same. Wave is pretty much stalled out in the middle for the bot side with a slight lead towards FBI, but it's barrier to heal and exhaust and heal for the other side on the support. So not too much aggression to come out of these bot lanes with the summoner spells. I actually really like the discussion too because exhaust itself was buffed. Mm -hmm. um, extra half a second on the duration of it really does go a long way. Uh, it was a decent summer spell already, reducing a lot of damage, but it can shut things down, yeah. like Pantheon that are jumping into the middle of your team. It's a fairly squishy jungler, and if you take away the damage options and slow the champion too, so you can then get around his directional immunity, uh, makes it a lot easier to deal with. So Aphromoo definitely has a lot of answers for the team right now with Thresh, um, able to get those plays as well. We'll see if anything does happen mid lane. I, I probably expect there to be less action initially mid lane because both of them has taken cleanse. Yeah. Uh, we were looking for early kill pressure, but if both mid laners opt into the cleanses, it really puts a stop to those CC chains. We'll see a bit of a fight onto Acadian. He should be able to tunnel out of this with Frog and helping. A walk back from Ponser as he gets the top, which means Fumi should be able to do the same and get himself there without a teleport. So. Nicely done by the top laners, and that CS should be cleaned up by Hanser, which gives him about a, 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 a wave lead, rather. Yeah, Hanser's got the wave in a really nice spot for himself. Hunting guys return there for Hooney on the Mordekaiser. Going to be able to stack up damage over time. Should be able to get good use out of the madness in a melee versus a melee matchup there versus the Aatrox. Meanwhile, mid lane, they're mostly just fighting over uh, shoving the waves, as we talked about. Both of them with the cleanse is a lot more defensive there. And we'll have to see if the junglers make their uh, their first moves, because once level six does come in, pretty big options for both, and they're very different. Um, Rek'Sai has options for ganking over walls that other junglers do not have. If we look at the top side like we are right now, um, you know, getting behind him and going over this wall is something that is very rare for junglers. Um, because you want to have your dash ability plus your CC ability after you go for the ganks. Um, but you'll have extra damage there with your level 6 acquired for the ultimate too. Surprised to see no rotation here, especially with it being Cloud Drake first. Nobody wants that Rift Herald right away. Seems like Acadian Closer have been able to find each other on the jungle ever so slightly and keep track of each other, so it's been hard to get up there. Vision's already on that by Golden Guardian for Rift Herald, so 
Ping has just gone down by Dignitas. Maybe they'll start to head over. There is Aphromu following Cadian. And look at this. Going into the Dragon, FBI and Huhi actually go clear out the ward. Meanwhile, Aphromu has roamed to the top side of the map. You see Thresh on your mini-map right now. Aphromu hovering up around the possible Rift Herald swap play. Uh, everybody knows your eight minutes as soon as he's up there are very common nowadays. So. Dignitas looking around for where Golden Guardian is trying to get their extra pressure. It's <laughs> the Man of Steel just walks up to Fog of War and feels like clearing out a tunnel. I didn't even know there were three members on the other side. So Golden Guardians feel like they have pretty good control apparently as they see FBI and Huhi moving up and down the river knowing Dignitas is doing some type of roaming. As that all comes to an end, they just realize Dignitas is now power and numbers on bot side. Yeah, and there's a reason for the trepidation on the side of Dignitas. Because they know that Pantheon is now level 6. Even if, they, uh, if they do not have vision immediately of this champion, if you start out a play, you have to account for the possibility of the ultimate coming in, of them turning around that numbers advantage. So that's why both teams are just playing to... Very conservative ward lines right now. And Dignitas take their time. Drop down their triple control wards through the river. Slowly clear out those wards before finally starting up the dragon. And just trading the objectives. Rift Herald going over to the side of Golden Guardian. That'll feel good. The fight topside would have been fantastic too. Callfield's finished up up there. So having a big cool down for the fight. And it looks like those are trade objectives as you said. Looking at the gold differences on the map. No core items just yet, as we're just at the 10 minute mark. But Ocean Drake is next, so we got Mountain or Infernal to change the rift. And this trade, see if the hook lands, does. Coming around, Goofy looks like he could be in a bad spot here. Tries to get the face breaker down, Haymaker back for shield, and Acadium doesn't want anything to do with that now. <laughs> we got some woos in the audience for a little <laughs> bit of action. Nice yeah. Haymaker there, finally some, uh, some damage dealt. Um, this this change, though, is not really, uh, the trade of objectives is not really a surprise. I have some stats for you for the Golden Guardians. Stats. They're, they're actually top three uh, in the LCS in first tower percentage, first three tower percentage. That's wow. getting all okay. three of the outers. A bit the and bigger. in Rift Herald control. However, they are bottom in dragon control. So very often, Ooh. Golden Guardians are making this choice. Um, and there's a very long discussion about gold early game versus dragon stacking early game. Golden Guardians for this season have always gone for the top side and for the gold. They currently are holding on to the Rift Hail. If you get your cleanse flash burned on the Zoe, then mid lane is definitely a very viable area to try and use that Rift Hail. Get your turret plates and get down the most important uh, line of outer defenses. Or you just use your opponent's cleanse and flash, right? <laughs> there you go. Zoe can just pick up <laughs> Golden Glues next time he uses hits. There you go. But yeah, it definitely makes it a bit harder for Froggen to be as aggressive in the mid lane. We've seen Acadian being there a few times, but Closer comes in for an attack. As Rift Herald heads bot, that's going to be able to take down the turret with two plays up. And that's a nice cleanup for that. Here they go on to Golden Glue, though, knowing he can play aggressive, thinking Froggen's flash. And spells are down, but he's able to tiptoe out of that aggressive three-man gank mid as they drop the bot turret. Golden Guardians head up in gold. And Golden Guardians increase their first tower percentage here yet again. <laughs> Good Rift Herald usage there. FBI and Huhi had been able to take so many plates on their own. I think they almost got a full three on their own and then just used the Rift Herald to knock down uh, the last two there, also acquiring first turret bonus. And you can see the power of uh, Callista there, bonded with Set, able to wear down on that area of the map. And now they've got this nice gold lead to work with. What you want to do as soon as you get that area of the map opened up, rotate through because Callista Set, so much playmaking potential here with the ultimate available. And that's why they've got FBI and Huhi immediately to the mid lane, keeping up that pressure, trying to get as many turret plates as they possibly can in the one minute left before they fall. Especially when they even get a little bit of a lead, this duo is so hard to take down as they move together. Because FBI gets to stand back, who he can usually take shots, and you fake call him out of a bad situation if you're too close to the turret and you get initiated on. So they have quite a bit of agency as they move around the map right now. Golden Glue and the rest of the team looks like they've panned back out to their positions as Golden Glue takes back the mid lane. 
and we'll see Haunter head back bottom. Dignitas now looking for something. Picks and Ward clears is the name of the game with bubbles and hooks coming from Aphromoo and Froggen right now. I do like as well the early pickup of uh, the Bramble Vest here for Mooney. Aatrox has a ridiculous amount of healing in the kit, uh, especially when you pop your ultimate. And if he goes for those 1v1s, then Aatrox it will reliably apply that Grievous Wounds to himself because Melee Champion's gonna have to uh, in order to trade with you at all. And that bolsters one of the possible options that Dignitas do have for this mid game is setting that Mordekaiser. You get him to level 11 for your level two ultimate um, and he'll be able to keep up that side lane pressure even though they are the first ones to lose their outer turret. They have a lot less territory to work with on bottom side and it's less safe. Mordekaiser is one of the champions that you can utilize to do it. Obviously yeah. because you just ulti jungler or whoever's coming to gank you and make it a 1v1 <laughs> for the duration. So if you're in a fight with Goonie and his Mordekaiser, who are you grabbing on, on Golden Guardians? Uh, well, I mean, it in the best situation. In the best situation, honestly, uh, I grab the Callista because then you cannot use your ultimate, and it actually hurts who he and uh, FBI. Callista is very annoying because of the hopping, though. So mm. you have to be in a very good it. position and know that you have, you know, flash advantage or something like that to make sure you can actually kill the Callista or oh. make sure you you land your abilities because Calissa is definitely one of the ones that can outplay the Mordekaiser in the Death Realm, so I get a little hesitant. The other main option would be Closer, the Jungler Pantheon. I'd say Jungler is almost always a good option for solo lane Mordekaisers to ult because um, you will pretty much always know that you will have a level lead and be able to take that one. On Vision here, Monster is going to start up the Drake. Good to begin. A little bit of healing onto the team, and we'll see what Rift changes like after this one. 25.5 to 23.5. So Dick Golden Guardians holding a slight lead, but not really feeling, I'd say, comfortable to push that, or maybe they're just waiting for Dignitas to make a mistake. Dig has been doing a great job at clearing. Props to Aphromoo. Every time we see him on the screen, he's got a sweeper up where he's a Scryer Bloom, scratching down these wards from Golden <laughs> Guardians. So I guess it would be hard to go into the Fog of War against that Zoe and Thresh, and especially Acadian. You want to know that you are on Sonar if it's happening. Yep, big pick up there of the Dragon as well for the Golden Guardians. Uh, you see they take advantage of that reset timer on Dignitas' side. As soon as they have everybody back in base, cleanly pick up that Drake. Outer Tower on the bottom side being down also means that Huni couldn't push up. They didn't have any extra minion vision or anything. So well done by the Golden Guardians to secure themselves a neutral objective without any confrontation on the side of Dig able to get to their first item breakpoint. There's a gold on your screen. Is actually a lot of this might be used in the next fight. Everybody's spiking a little bit on that first item. Blade of the Rune King, Essence Reaver for your marksman in respective. We'll see this going down now. 9,000 onto the Rift Herald. Katie ain't gonna go over the wall. He's gotta go real deep for this. They pulled it out very nice by Golden Guardians to kind of situate Dignitas in a way they would not want to fight. And Golden Guardians is able to come up with two of those Rift Herald stats going up, Kobe. <laughs> That's our new uh, Porcupine Rift Herald skin as well. You see with all the Callista Spears <laughs> and Shelly. Uh, we'll have different versions out shortly. Very defensive ward line, though. Um, like you're talking about, they have been very diligent on making sure there's no Golden Guardian wards across the river. But Golden Guardians aren't stepping across the river. They're just controlling neutral objectives. Ping pong, you get your dragon, then they actually just Reset, rotate everybody up to the top side, grab Rift Herald number two, and Rift Herald number two should mean outer turret number two. We'll go to the side of Golden Guardians. I'd rather see them use it towards mid lane uh, because that really opens yep. up your possibilities uh, post 20 minutes as far as a lot of Baron control goes, but uh, their options top are just fine as well, and Closer's the one holding it. You can see the goal is just about 400, I'd say, in favor of most of those lanes. The jungler's pretty even, and the support's actually a pretty big jump there. 700 gold for who he is. He's cleaning things up and farming as much as he can, too, to stay strong. That's going to be a heck of a fight coming from FBI and who he is. We haven't really seen Golden Guardians get into a fight, but in, in that, 
We haven't seen Dignitas get into a fight <laughs> either. <laughs> zero, zero, Kobe. True, Riv. We've got peace on the rift. Mm -hmm. No fight nice. to be found here. And it's infernal, too. Ocean's already gone, so they should be getting pretty ivy right now. It's just about the objectives. It's all aggression towards objectives. Possibly a fight here towards the mid lane. Still staying safe. Golden Guardian sends the Bruisers to the front, and they're able to take down mid turret as well. Top turret is the only thing that stands now for Dignitas on that outer rim. And Golden Guardians have everything up on the map so far. The only thing they've lost is that Cloud Drake, so they will back up. Dignitas still looking for ways in, but they're not forcing themselves into a fight. It, it, feeling like they're behind, which I think is also a good mentality. Keep yourself in. Mm, yeah, it's it's definitely tough because we we keep on uh, this defensive path for Dig, and they're going to continue to lose territory. We we just put mid lane turret at top of the list. Riv, top of the list is checked off now for Golden Guardians. Rift Tail Gus, mid turret boxes. down, um, and it's only half a minute until the Baron does come yeah. up. So very clear move here for Golden Guardians now. Um, top side, last outer turret for them, and then they can start to whittle away at that defensive Dignitas territory where all of these wards that they have diligently kept up the entire game have not amounted to any counterattacks. They have not amounted to any attempts at that playmaking where you are the team with Zoe, Thresh, and Rek'Sai. Um, definitely all possibilities of finding picks, but Maybe we see one here on the little invade. Aphromu is sussed out as the ward over the wall does find him. And we will not get a pick today. All right, Dig's starting to get themselves onto the other side. See what they can get in terms of pushing. I'm, I was thinking as I look at the second half of their split here, the win versus the Mortals in week five on day one, but losses since and can easily make that timid mentality where, well, we don't want to lose again, so we got to look for that perfect play. And like you said, if you pay that passive, you can't really get an attack in at any time. Yeah, it definitely can be a downward spiral if you start losing and it starts to affect your mentality. Dignitas are currently on a four game losing streak and they do not want to make a mistake. However, dragon stacking is uh, occurring for Golden Guardians now, as this one will also be picked up without any sort of contest from Dig. That looks risky for Golden Glue for a moment. So a Drake is picked up once again, two away from Infernal Soul for the side of Golden Guardians, three away for Dignitas here as Dig starts to pick up that Baron control. Maybe they feel like the 5v5 could be in their favor. We're 21 minutes in without a kill just yet. Is It's all about the turrets, it's all about the objectives, and it looks like Dig will also pick up their first turret top. No, FBI stands alone as the forward vision for Dignitas is not enough to let them know that turret was possible. Yep, the boss comes walking up the river, who he <laughs> runs them out of town, and no Golden Guardians defense will fall today. Now, we're, we are past the stage where you're looking at Rek'Sai and you're looking at Acadian for playmaking. Right. Rek Rek'Sai's biggest time to shine is during lane phase. Lots of gank uh, possibilities Hello for blades, the champions. Swipe them up. Exactly. It's uh, even hit home even more because of the Hello Blades is the more early game bursty keystone than the Conqueror that you sometimes see. But now you're in the stage of the game where it's so much more about grouping for the Baron dance for the dragon stacking that is about to occur that the picks have to more come from the Zoe bubbles over walls. You mentioned that you need uh, your vision to set those yeah. up. Plus the um, Thresh possibilities of either following up or even starting those plays out. Otherwise, um, you know, Rek'Sai can go for a big flash play, but it has to be with concise coordination from the entire team because it's uh, become so much more risky once the teams start to group up. And you have this five on five you're facing with Golden Guardians where you're thinking, oh my God, all right, where is this? We have to mark so many things. Where is the Aatrox? Possibility of a flank there. Um, you're worrying about the Callista ultimate on set which is m amazing AOE that can start a team fight out. And Pantheon ults over the back of your team from anywhere. So Golden Guardians just effortlessly move up, take down another objective here. And that is the last of the outer turrets. Continuing in line with their stats, bolstering first to three as well. Who knew the communication from who he is like, it's like, let's play the pass <laughs> the pacifist game. We can win without getting a kill. Let's do it. You're really putting himself Very zen there. today. Very zen today, it is. I like it. Deep breaths. 
Baron taking one as well. What just happened? They were poking me for a while. Ah, uh, they completely pull off. Yeah, no reason to rush it right now. <laughs> it's, it's only 23 and a half minutes into the game. Uh, and there's no, no kill to be had. And no reason to rush that ahead. So 39.437.1. I just did the same thing. <laughs> yep. We'll get that for you in a second for the latest first blood because it's got to be coming up soon. I mean, the golems are just taking a beating this game. Yeah, honestly, watch out. we've got a if blood. jungle camp, <laughs> oh man. The chickens! Think of the chickens! Oh. <laughs> There's so many. They're building up the confidence. I mean, look at this. I can fight six people at once. Look at that clean, Go into five clean tunnel usage here by Acadian. We're in there. Here we go. Scuttle crab speed. Oh, speeds this. him up. They hit the Scryer's Bloom and Riv. Dramatization oh. with Fog Warp. of War. Ward fight, ward fight, ward fight. Whoa! It's a bubble! Oh, he is cleansed. <laughs> but the ward okay. goes down. Progress. Okay. Remember, both these teams sitting at five wins right now. Possibilities that either of them fall out of contention for playoffs. Currently, um, they I, I would say they are both have great chances for getting in. Um, but this game is definitely going to move the needle quite a lot as far as perception. So 13-13 for this split was the latest mm. previous first blood. I remember Mega Zero. Pull it out of the Mega water. Zero's on Renekton was like 24 minutes back in the day. So we're past that too. Oh. Should we go for an all-time record? Yeah. I mean, let's go for every league. I am sure let's that do it. I'm sure that we've never ended a game without a kill. Uh, the true pacifist award. Ooh. That's one of those achievements that pops up on your Steam and you're just like, why don't really feel yeah, proud yeah, yeah. to have that, but kind of I do. <laughs> one of the craziest stats I remember was Chowster's Janet game where he lived for 60 minutes uh, on that yeah, one yeah. when he's on CLG. Uh, I still remember that, but there are some good ones. We'll see if we can get one for this. We're checking the longest record right now. I always thought it was funny when I'd be watching a basketball game with my family and they would just throw out these stats that were like, <laughs> on Tuesdays when pizza is served in the arena, they have never missed more than four and a half free throws. <laughs> and it's like, what? That sounds interesting. Give a pizza. It's not really. <laughs> uh, I want some pizza now. Damn. Oh, oh almost. Boy. Kobe, there's going to be a death. I cannot wait. Hunts are kind of flanking, but they had a Rek'Sai and a Thumb, and he walked out. Here we go! This is the part I'm here for! Oh, Afro is going to get hit first. The hooks are going out, and it's going to be Afro going down for first blood. It's going into the hands. FBI, he says, open up. We're coming on in. He's going to be in the death realm. Oh, two he in the death realm. But they take the tanky guy, and he's going to be able to come back out with a 50 kale shot coming from Golden Glue. There's another one as Acadian falls to the floor. They'll drop Johnson, too. And Dig or Golden Guardians dropped Dignitas from the first fight of the game. Golden Guardians dropped the big elbow on him there, Riv. They were taking neutral objective after neutral objective. And finally, with the fight, we see why the Golden Guardians smash Dignitas here. That's going to be yeah. the Baron. They can also go grab the Dragon. Uh, and I don't think there's going right. to be a strong contest from Dig. Their revival Ooh, timers are coming up now. Froggen does not have a smite picked up, so he does not go for a possible Zoe steal. Baron and Power recalls mean they can recall and they get back out to that Drake. Let's take a look at this team fight, though. We mentioned the set and Callista combo. They don't even have to use it. Who he knows? Oh, that face breaker. He can just flash in there, front line. And then even though he gets ulted by Mordekaiser as a support, he's got a stopwatch and he's also set. So crazy regeneration is able to survive the death realm. And once he pops out, he knows that his team has won the 4v4 side of it as well. Oh, they're going oh. right back into it. Dig's going to lose another one. That's actually Dragon going over to Acadian, but they do take down Hooney at the same time. This game went from pacifist to pass the fist real quick. <laughs> 27 and a half minutes, still fight towards the bot side. Afro Moo is going to get taken out here, possibly by Hauntzer. in the 1v1 as Acadian comes to help, but he probably put himself in a bad spot. Tunnels to safety and Hooney, or sorry, Hoohy, there it is. Can't face break him back. Yep, one bright spot for Dig is that Acadian did steal that dragon like you're talking about. They mm -hmm. get an Infernal Drake, they delay the possibility of the three and the soul, but unfortunately for them, Riv, I'm gonna predict this game does not pop up a soul <laughs> dragon. And Golden Guardians are inside the base with that Baron buff. 
as you can see with the spike in the gold grab, they are running amok. Yeah, that's gonna be a big one for it, Dignitas, to have to climb back up. Lose the bottom inhibitor turret. Top lane is also getting pushed in slightly for Golden Guardian, so they can head towards top if they can stay after this fight in mid. But they have a minion wave right here. It looks like Haunter might actually start to get a solo split or at least keep that gate of Dignitas' bait clean. Possible fight coming in, and it is a fight. No possibility needed. The KDN goes down. They're gonna lose another one in Huni, and it is quick for Dignitas as they get into these fights and they're instantly dropped. Golden Guardians is so strong at this point. They're just able to take down Dig immediately. Bullet time doesn't even really hurt as Johnson tries to fire his ult across the team of Golden Guardians. And it looks like Golden Guardians trying to move themselves to six and seven shortly. They cannot move in with the cannon minion though, barrened up. They got another wave. Will they stay? Like I said, they still have top side. And do they have teleport on whoever's coming up? No, they don't, it's Hui. So they have to get back. This is kind of like, um, I was actually watching an MMA fight last night, Riv. Yeah, uh, everybody's and, talking about that one. Yeah, so Loved it. Did, did you see the beginning where they were just kind of dancing around each Indeed. other? The Indeed. crowd started booing because Oh wait, it was dude, so... you're paying for your pay to go to a dance show? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it was so long before right. either of them threw a punch. But now, as you see the first punch thrown, Golden Guardians just immediately... Floodgates. Floodgates open, they're ending this one. Haunts are getting the big... Uh, Q3 there, smashing it with the slow on the end, under the Nexus turrets, with the Baron buff as well. They just lay devastation to the Dignitas side, and this is a landslide victory uh, for the Golden Guardians. Your... That, was like, that was like the bell ring, though, right? They got they got Pat in, mm. got that little goopy stuff on their eyes, so it's not going to swell or bleed. They're good. Yeah. They're, they're not, we're, we're not calling this one yet. It's a little puffy, but they're good. Yep. We can get out there. One, one more round to go. They're going to have to have some crazy good moves here on Dig. <laughs> to get a lot of points in quick. Actually, yeah, you probably can't even count on points at this uh, at this stage. You're mm -hmm. just going to have to go for a knockout. Yeah. So Dig, let's see the knockout. The jabs don't work. There, there has to be a full swing and the Haymaker's already on the wrong side. You want, you want it on your side. And that's gonna be Hootie coming in big at support for Golden Guardians this game. They've really just been able to dominate the map and continue this dominance through each lane all the way up the inhibitor turret now on top side. That's the last one left. And they're going to leave FBI for now, as it looks like they're going to want to route around here and push Dignitas, squeeze them in their own base. All right. Last point of defense here for Dig. Top side inhibitor turret. Golden Guardians have super minions flooding in. They've got champions flooding into the base as well. And I don't think they can deal with either. <laughs> it's just a wall of Dig right now. They're like, if we all five put ourselves in front of this turret, we can do it. Aphromu getting a bit more heal back up. Goonie on the right side, takes Haunter right away. The Nexus turret's gonna be the focus for Golden Guardians and they take it down immediately as Johnson almost falls. The DPS getting pushed out of the site for Dignitas on both sides. And now it looks like the Nexus is in the eyes of Golden Guardians as they pick up a little more gold with the victory over Dignitas. Golden Guardians picking up their big win over Dignitas here. More separation, six wins now for them. Feeling a lot more comfortable. What a game, so methodical from the beginning. Uh, both teams seem timid, but then that can also be seen as Golden Guardians not putting themselves in a place to be picked. Dignitas was warding, looking for those picks, but neither were finding that window in the beginning. And you can take that a whole bunch of ways. Yeah, and I wouldn't say on the side of Golden Guardians that they were timid because they're saying, that's true, all right, that's true. we're gonna go take the objective. Do you have anything to say about it? No? Okay, well, uh, we'll move on to the next objective then. Uh, we will go now take the mid turret. We will take the top turret. Yeah. We will take the rift turret. We will take the dragon. Uh, and they're able to get it. They were putting the chances up. Golden Guardians are going to take the victory. And when we return, the Tigress is sitting down with the victorious Golden Glue. You don't want to miss it.